I'm going to explain how you add, adjust, and animate cameras here inside the light version of Cinema 4D. To follow along, go to File, Open, Working Files, Cinema 4D Files, Cameras. I set the scene up with this ground plane and these five fellows here, plus two cameras. I want you to ignore these cameras for the time being. We'll talk about them when we animate the cameras. Up to this point in the course, you've been adjusting the view inside the scene using the default camera. The one drawback to the default camera is that you can't animate it over time. You can move it around and change the view, but you can't have that done automatically over time. To do that, you need to add a camera. Now, working with cameras inside the light version of Cinema 4D is fairly easy. That's because there aren't many options. The light version does not have what's called the physical renderer nor depth of field. So there just aren't too many things you can do with a camera besides add it, change the focal length, and move it around. Now, there is a workflow inside After Effects that allows you to bring in a Cinema 4D file and add an After Effects camera to that project, but it's still controlled by the Cineware Cine Renderer, so it too cannot allow you to have depth of field and other features that you would find normally inside an After Effects camera. Nevertheless, there's still plenty you can do with a camera. So to add a camera, we go up here and click on this guy and hold it down for a second. You see there are three cameras, but in fact there's only one. That's the camera object here. The target camera is the camera object with a target tag. And even though there's an option here for the stereo camera, it does not exist inside the light version of Cinema 4D. So the only camera you've got here is the camera camera. So click on that, and that adds the camera, oddly enough. What you're seeing now is the view through the default camera. You're not seeing the view through this newly added camera. This line here shows you the frame of that camera, which equals your default camera when you add it. If you want to see the camera, we can kind of move things off to the right here and take a look at it. We'll just kind of turn things around like this and pull back a little bit like that. And there is the camera looking down on the scene where the default camera used to be moments ago. You can animate the camera from this vantage point, but typically you animate it by looking through it and then switching to the orthographic views if you want to use them as well. To look through this camera, you need to switch to it. And there are a couple of ways to do that. One's kind of cumbersome and one's really easy. So I'll show you the cumbersome way. That's to go up here to the viewport, click on cameras, use camera, and then select the camera you just added. The easy way is to go to your objects manager, go to your camera here and click on that little target there, that little black thing. Now it'll take you to your camera. Now we're looking through that camera. Let's take a look at the camera's properties. So with camera active here, I'm going down to object. You see that we've got a projection. Now the projection we're going to use is perspective. There are many other projections here. Most of these guys are unfamiliar to most of us. So we're sticking with perspective here. Then there's focal length, sensor size, field of view for horizontal and vertical. Now the field of view is connected directly to the focal length and the sensor size. Both of these guys control these things down here and the field of view controls the focal length. So it's all one big connected thing. If I want to zoom out, I can pull out like this. If I want to zoom in, I can push in like that. A better way to see all of this is to switch to the orthographic views. So I can click on my middle mouse button here, or click on this guy up there to see all four views there. Let's see what happens when we zoom in. I'll start rolling this up like that, and you see that we're zooming in on the left-hand side, and you notice that the field of view on these guys is shrinking, basically. That's what's going on, really, just changing the field of view. Notice the camera itself is not moving forward or backward. We're not dollying here, we're just changing the zoom. If I change the sensor size, basically the same thing happens like that. I'm going to reset these guys by right-clicking on these little double arrows there. And we're back to the original 36. Now it looks like not a whole lot is happening. You're just changing the field of view, but you in fact are changing the perspective at the same time. So I'm going to change to a really wide angle lens here. I'm going to say, let's say 10 for the wide angle lens. I'm going to push the camera in. I'm going to dolly in there to that guy in front like this over the side here and you can see it's distorted already. I'm going to go back to the perspective view here by clicking on that. Look around here a little bit. See how it gets distorted? That's because the wide angle lens does this kind of thing. If I change to the default focal length by right clicking here and going to 36, that distortion will be a little less obvious. I'll pull it back like that. And if I go to a typical portrait lens like 80, like this, you see that the distortion is essentially gone. So the focal length does make a difference in terms of the perspective and how it affects objects that are close and far away. All right, I'll switch back to the default 36 like that. All right, now I want to animate this camera. And I do that by setting some keyframes using this button down here, the Record Active Objects button. We start off by setting the initial keyframe by just clicking that now. We're going to record the active object, which is the camera. Let's move the time forward a little bit like this. Let's say 50 frames for me. So I'm going to push in a bit by holding down the Alt or Option button and then using my right mouse button to kind of push in and then manipulating the scene like so, and maybe turning it around like that. I'll set a keyframe for that. And then we'll tilt things up a little bit like so. Go forward in time a little bit like so. And let's say zoom in a bit on you and lift things up like that. Turn things around. Set another keyframe and go a little bit farther forward like that. And 
do some more manipulating here so you get a sense of how this works. Like that, let's say. I'll set a keyframe for you. Now we'll go back to the beginning and we'll play this animation, see how it works. Like that. Pull back to a wide shot like that. Relatively easy to set an animation. If you want to adjust it, you can go to each individual keyframe by starting to drag the time slider, then holding the shift key down, then it'll jump to each individual keyframe like that. And you can make an adjustments here inside the perspective view. Or you can go to the orthographic views by pressing the middle mouse button here or clicking on that guy. And you see the views here, I can pull back a little bit. The top view is probably your best bet. You can see how things work there. You can take this keyframe and move it around. I'm going to lift this one a little bit higher over here. The kind of things you can change over here inside the orthographic view. Go back to the perspective view and click on that again by going back to the beginning and start over. Minor changes like that. There you go. I have two more cameras here. Let me make them visible here inside the editor by clicking on that button and clicking on that button. Switch to this wide camera here like that by clicking on this little target. Now we're at the wide camera. I can animate that. See the wide camera just kind of goes around the scene like that. Stops for a moment and goes around like that. And you can see the other camera is moving along as we see the wide shot. Let's switch to the tight camera like so. Play that one as well. Looks like this. Like a roller coaster ride. Okay. Now it can be helpful to have multiple cameras like this. And a typical workflow in the retail version of Cinema 4D would be to have separate render passes for each camera. Or you can use a camera controller called the stage. You can click on this here and click on stage. And you can use stage to control each camera when it comes on and when it goes off. We're not going to cover the stage in this course, but I do want to let you know that it exists. But the advantage of working with Cinema 4D Lite inside After Effects is that you don't need to worry about rendering various passes. Open up this file inside After Effects, and then you can bring in multiple versions of the same file, and then switch from one camera to the other inside your comp. And I'll explain that After Effects Cinema 4D camera workflow in a separate lesson. So that's how you work with cameras here inside the Lite version of Cinema 4D.